All right. Welcome to this talk about SSD flash versus hard drives. This is by Scott Moulton. If you were here last year, he did an absolutely incredible talk on the inner workings of hard disks and the difficulties and trials and, and how you can actually successfully recover them. And this year, he's going to tell us all sorts of amazing things about Flash. So please welcome Scott. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Scott Moulton. I own a company called Forensic Strategy Services and a data recovery company called MyHardDriveDie.com. And my primary job is to deal with forensics and to assist in doing any kind of data recoveries or anything that's sent into our office. And that's kind of a, a little bit of a specialty, at least from a forensic standpoint. A lot of forensics guys just go out and image a disk, and if there's a problem with it, they really don't know what to do with it. Uh, so in my particular case, I'm trying to repair hard drives, fix hard drives. If you know, We've had a few that might have had a bullet through one of the boards or something and actually repair it for a case and re-deliver that back in some forensic manner that would actually be acceptable in court. But we also just do like regular data recoveries, and so I've done many thousands by this point. Uh, about a year ago, I've been working on this speech for probably a little bit more than a year, I started getting a little bit more interested in SSD and flash hard drives, not just all of a sudden I came up with this week because MacBook Air came out or anything like that. Uh, I've been working on it for a really long time. And there's a lot of proprietary information, there's a lot of different things, but the first thing is, is that my presentation is timed. Uh, if I had done this in PowerPoint, it would be extremely powerless, it would not work very well at all. And so there's a, there's a lot done in Flash, a lot done to control this, and it's timed. So if you guys can hold questions to the end, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the goals of trying to d learn something about Flash and deal with Flash is basically from the forensic side, dealing with things like file slack space and what actually happens to the files and uh, what actually happens when files are physically deleted. Because it appeared to me that there was a lot of differences looking at flash drives and SSD drives than there was with hard drives. So basically I'm going to try to get into those particular items. <clears throat> so this is my, my big disclaimer. The content that you're looking at from a standpoint of SSD drives, at least as far as what's currently available is fairly new. Even though the technology is old and been around for a while, a lot of the things have just started to come around to being affordable and so things are changing rapidly. People are using different types of materials and different ways of making the systems run. And so a lot of the stuff is proprietary right now and there's this battle about who's going to win, who's going to, you know, it's the, the old Blu-ray slash, you know, CD, you know, whatever format that you're trying to fight with. And there's no particular way that's exactly perfect for anything. And we had a similar thing with hard drives years and years ago, but we've had 30, 40 years now of consolidation with hard drives. So as they've been bought and companies have bought each other, a lot of the stuff is merged together. And so there's a primary amount of things that are exactly the same amongst man manufacturers and vendors, which is not necessarily true with flash and SSD. But I want to make it clear right up front that the very first thing I'm going to talk about primarily is how NAND itself works that is the chips that it is relying on for flash. So that there's, there's no big gray area from a standpoint of which part of this I'm talking about. <clears throat> So what is a solid state hard drive? Primarily the whole point everybody's been making is that there are no moving parts. So ultimately that's kind of the goal and people call pretty much everything that has no moving parts a solid state hard drive. And it's kind of getting, the name is kind of getting confused a little bit and a lot of things have actually happened. Uh, one of the primary things that's different between a solid state hard drive that you're using today versus say a USB memory stick is the type of controller and how it's actually being controlled. And there really is a fundamental difference, but there's a lot of things that make up a solid state hard drive, but the primary thing is no moving parts. <laughs> we have certainly had clients that have had experience with this. Uh, I'm married, so I'm fine. So, uh, but. <laughs> That could have been a married guy. I've heard that story too, you know, thrown off an escalator, thrown out the window. There's been a number of things that have actually happened to these, uh, thrown overboard on a ship. 
Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard all those you know, terrible stories. But uh, obviously the point is, is that if you have a hard drive that has moving parts in it, there's always a chance or potential for damage, even though you have these new accelerometers trying to shut the hard drive down fast, trying to you know, say, because I know that everybody that had an IBM hard drive that says, oh, I'm going to shut down and park, there's tons of IBM hard drives that have died. So you know, a lot of them have big ditches dug through the platter, and that's done by the head, so it didn't just park just because. So we, we get them in from all different kinds. You know, usually the laptop itself actually has some pretty big damage to it. Um, ultimately, one of the things, too, that I see with what might happen with SSD is it's probably not going to replace everything eventually here as we get around to replacing hard drives and doing things, but it should be great for mobile platforms. So we're probably not going to get a lot of changes in servers and, and physical desktops, at least here in the short run, but we certainly will in laptops, which is where this might have been thrown out the window. <clears throat> so what if this was an SSD hard drive that just got thrown out? My opinion is that there's still a party going on on this chip and that it's having a good time and that as long as there's no physical damage to it, <laughs> he's still a happy guy. <laughs> now, don't act like you guys don't have that. I saw you encrypting it right before you got on the plane. <clears throat> so there's some other reasons. I'm going to start here with like about two minutes of fluff, and then we're going to get into the real stuff. The primary thing with hard drives versus what's going to happen in SSDs is that hard drives, since they have a moving head, it physically is in a different place over the platter. And there are different speed variations depending on how big your platter is. So a uh, 1.8 inch platter is going to be much slower than dealing with, say, a 3.5 inch hard drive. But you don't have that kind of problem with SSD. SSD is fairly uh, synonymous with the speed throughout the entire disk. It, there's not really any variations from that kind of speed. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the other problems is with a hard drive, too, that you have a lot of error correction that's actually going on at the same time. That A lot of people think that the hard drive has a, uh, a zero and a one written to the platter. Well, that's not really true. Physically, it's actually encoding a sound type file. It has actually preamps on it and encodes the data and then reads that back. So you may have a lot of different variations in the type of content that's being written to it, whereas you don't have that from a speed standpoint or, or even writing to the physical disk itself with a SSD drive. <clears throat> then you also have power consumption. Physically, when a SSD drive is either in sleep mode or even when it's being used, it has very low power consumption, and sometimes it's uh, 10 times less than what you actually have with like a spinning disk or a spinning platter. And just to give you an example, I have a Sony laptop that I normally would get about three hours of battery life. I changed that to an SSD hard drive, and now I'm getting over five. So I'm getting five and a half hours or so. Now, I don't know what's wrong with the MacBook Air, because they claimed like five or more. And a lot of people are complaining right now that they're only seeing, say, three hours or so, even with an SSD hard drive. So there's some big differences there. Um, but one thing that I can note is that the MacBook Air has a Samsung hard drive in it, which the hard drive is similar to what's in the iPods, and it may not be exactly the same as what other vendors and things are using with the drive right now. So I'm sure that that'll be corrected over time, but um, you know, at least for other systems I've seen, and changing out into a solid-state hard disk has made a dramatic difference in the power consumption uh, and gotten rid of a lot of the time constraints. Then you also have noise and vibration, which obviously that's great because there's just no noise at all. Uh, you don't have any kind of movement, you don't have any kind of sounds, you don't have to he keep hearing it spin up and spin down. So it's nice to just have one just solid and quiet thing. Anybody who's got a MacBook, you know that that's probably your hard drive on the left. Uh, it's, if you've put it in your lap while you've used it, especially MacBook Pro, uh, that's about how hot it gets. I've seen them getting upwards of uh, 170, 180 degrees while they're in use, and that's, that's pretty dramatic and will burn the crap out of your leg. Uh, and no more babies in the future. Um, <clears throat> but the solid state stuff is being, it's very cold. It's very, I mean, it's not like you reached over and you pulled your flash memory stick out of your USB port and it was really hot. Uh, that, that's, it's still a much lower temperature than what you're going to see with hard drives and spinning platters. <clears throat> and then you also have your weight. They, you know, because we're making larger and larger chips with less and less uh, space that's necessary, and you're looking at laptops